Old School Magic is the collective name for a group of player-controlled rule sets which center around cards from the early days of the game. The different Old School rule sets are typically regional because players like to play with people who are near them. Magic the Gathering was released in August 1993. The early print runs were relatively small because the company didn't have much money and wasn't sure how many cards to print. Many places didn't receive cards prior to revised. The revised print run was finally large enough that the game could expand into a lot of new areas. The Type 2 format was introduced in 1995. The game expanded as new sets were released. Players came and went, and came back again. Eventually, some players grew nostalgic for the early days of the game or wanted to experience what they'd missed. The rules of the game have evolved over time. How mulligans work, whether you get to draw a card on your first turn, steps and phases, the stack, mana burn, artifacts shutting off when tapped, whether tapped creatures deal damage during combat. This means that old school magic is not identical to how it was originally played. This, along with which sets are allowed and which cards are banned or restricted, is the reason why there are multiple versions of old school magic. One of the earliest old school magic rule sets was created in Gothenburg, Sweden during 2007. They called it 9394. Later, it also became known as Swedish. Their first tournament had four players. They've done a lot to promote their 9394 format and have inspired many people to play old school magic. In Minneapolis, Minnesota, at the end of 2007, six people wanting to play with their old cards found the 9394 website and began playing Old School Magic. In Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, during 2010, two Old School Magic tournaments were held. They called it Throwback. It included all sets from 1993 to 1996. Their first tournament had 13 players. 9394 had a following in Toronto, Ontario, and held tournaments in November 2012. There were at least nine players. At that time, the largest old school magic tournament was 34 players in Gothenburg, Sweden. NoobCon regularly breaks the record for being the largest old school magic tournament, and it's considered to be the place where the old school world championship is held. In January 2014, I wanted to play with my old cards again. Other local players didn't have the old cards, so I built historical tournament decks for nine players to use. 1993 Magic was very different. It had ante, the deck size minimum was 40 cards, and there wasn't a four of each card restriction, so you could have a deck that was all lightning bolts or all plague rats if you wanted. The Duelist Convocation created the 60 card deck minimum, the four of rule, and the ban restricted list in January of 1994. So I focused on 1994 forward and getting at least nine decks that I liked. The decks ranged from March 1994 to July 1995. The decks were completed at the last minute on the day of the tournament, May 17, 2014. As far as I know, this was the first old school magic tournament in Florida. Brandon Devane was the winner. If I remember correctly, he was playing the earliest of the nine decks, which had four Library of Alexandrias, because it wasn't restricted yet, Ancestral Recall, Time Twister, Wheel of Fortune, a bunch of Artifact Mana, Hercules Recalls, Fireballs, and Forks. Groups in Northern California and Chicago began playing 9394 in 2014. They adjusted the rules to allow revised and fallen empires. The Eternal Central Old School Magic rules were created. The Eternal Central Old School Magic Tournament was held October 24, 2014 at Eternal Weekend in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. There were 12 players. The biggest Old School Magic Tournament in 2014 was again NoobCon in Gothenburg, Sweden with 44 players. For 2015, NoobCon in Gothenburg, Sweden had 57 players in April, and Eternal Central Old School at Eternal Weekend in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, had 54 players in August. I expanded from nine historical tournament decks to 14 and held a 14-player tournament in Florida on November 14, 2015. The additional decks extended beyond the July 1995 timeframe of the first nine. When asked for the name of the format, 
I needed to use terms that the newer players would understand, and described it as Vintage Vintage, meaning that it's decks from the early days of the Vintage format. I brought a sealed 4th edition booster box, and we did a box break for prize support. Every player received one pack, with the remaining packs being split between the top four. Along with that were two sets of Power 9 proxies. First place received a full set of nine. The second set was split into three piles. One pile was the Lotus, one pile was the five Moxes, and one pile was the three big blue cards. Second, third, and fourth place each got to choose which pile of proxies they wanted. Two playmats were also given out. One of them had the new Black Lotus artwork by Chris Rowan. The main idea behind this prize support was to encourage players to build their own decks, hopefully enabling a constructed format in the future. Matt Simmons was the winner. If I recall correctly, he was playing a zoo deck. As far as I know, this was the biggest old school magic event in Florida, at least until June 2019. I suspect there's been a bigger event since June 2019, but I don't know when or where or how many people it was. Here's my interview from the November 14th, 2015 event. And welcome back um, to our second episode of Judge and Jury. This is Dylan Moore, and I am joined with... Jury Jumlon. And where do you live, Jury? 123 Jury Jumlon Street. Good job, Jury. Yeah, do I get a cookie? No. Well, why, why did I do that? <laughs> Were you about to say the F word? Were you about to no, drop an F bomb? No, I just said... Fa. 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 Back to you, Jury. Okay, and I have, I've made a few notes so we don't forget anything at the start here. Uh, we can start off by plugging that we run a lovely Tumblr called FriendlyMulligan.tumblr.com. It's, it's a wonderful place. Yeah, we co-host it. Uh, we post about random stuff. Like last weekend, I did a cube and I, I drafted Esper Rocks. And I think we're going to have a cube podcast next week. Yeah, it'll, our next one will probably be cube. We're kind of having a, a spur of the moment uh, topic this week because it's gaining in popularity. Um, we'll talk about that in a bit, I guess. Uh, we can move on to our wonderful Galaxy Games plug. We are in the lovely downtown Deland, Florida, and the wonderful Galaxy Games, who is kind enough to host us. We are here, not on our normal FNM, actually. No. Uh, we're here before a special event. And what event is that, Dylan? Uh, the event that doesn't really have a proper name. I, I don't think, know. I think Tra- Tavis said it was Vintage Vintage. Vintage Vintage. That's th- a good name. I think that's what he named it. Vintage okay. Vintage. So... And we'll this talk. Is, we'll we'll uh, have him okay. on the show. Yeah. We, that'll take a little while to explain. We can do that when we have him after the cut, right? Hopefully. And I guess with that, we will take our break for our event, and we will let you know how it goes when we get back. I'm excited to uh, see what kind of decks we're gonna get. I don't know the 1993 to 1998 World Championship decks all that well. Yeah. I'm, I'm I guess have we talked about the event much? I don't think we have. No, we haven't. Well, let's give it a short summary before we break. So as we mentioned before, this is vintage, vintage. Um, someone has Tavis has gathered together the top decks during the 1993 to 1998 period and have put them in all unlabeled boxes. And basically, we're gonna he's gonna hand them out randomly, and we're gonna get these decks. And they'll have a little short written insert about the deck and how it's played, and maybe a little bit of it's about its history. And then we'll just run a tournament like this. Yep. He's, he's mostly interested in seeing how these things interact with each other from different early eras, and it should be a, it should be a fun time. I'm looking to black vice out a few opponents. I'm looking to not have a combo deck. I don't know how <laughs> Good well... luck with early magic. I'm not, I'm not sure how well I could pilot a, a vintage 93-98 to 98 combo <laughs> deck, but probably not pretty well. You're looking for that uh, Savannah Lions yeah, in there. Yeah, give me the Savannah Lions. The deck that runs Savannah oh, Lions. Oh, man. Armageddon? Was oh. that... Was that really yeah, 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 yeah. Let me play this Savannah Lions deck. Armageddon deck. I know how to play that deck. I, Christ. I, I, I'm a white weenie deck. <laughs> you, you play Savannah Lions, you blow up lands. Yes. They can't win. I'm, I'm about that. Sarah Angel? Jesus. I'm okay with Sarah Angels, too. God. 
I want something disgusting. Something including uh, necropodence would be God. would be the play. Tom. Dark ritual necropodence go. Okay, I'm okay. I'm okay with necropodence too. I, I, as you know, I'm very fond. Yeah, you can kill yourself that I'm way. Killing myself. With, That's perfect. As long as I'm drawing cards, and so necropodence sounds sweet. I'm okay with that too. Necropodence, draw 19 cards, pass turn. Yes. <laughs> That's that's a game winning formula. Can't lose. Nope. All right. Well, with that, we will see you, lovely folks, after the break. It's, it's, it's Goodbye. Like, see ya. And we're back. Uh, we've just returned from the vintage vintage event. Uh, I was actually in third place. I was running the reanimator. And that was a really good intro, Jerry. I just want you to know you're doing a great job. I'm trying really hard. Uh, we have Dylan here. How's it going? Hi, everyone. And we have our lovely de- guest here, Tavis. Would you like to say hi, Tavis? Hello. So Excellent. Tavis was the one who organized and set up all these deck lists. He even re- wrote a decent amount of these little blurbs, um, which helped us to understand the decks, because I don't think a lot of people were familiar with 1993, 1998 decks. Um, so we have him here to just kind of discuss the event and yeah and how everything went Tavis how long have you been playing magic since 1995 that is a long time I was two years old yeah (laughs) I would not have been any good at magic at that point (laughs) I would have been terrible I was 15 oh wow what was what was the set around then Ice Age and Chronicles were my uh, first products so I'm this is a very simple question but has much changed since then I imagine yes yeah. yeah. A lot of power creep. Oh, yeah. Back then, uh, every rare was worth $5. <laughs> that sounds like a dream right now. Yep. <laughs> In a standard with an $80 rare, I would take that. Yeah. Rares were actually rare. Wow. The bulk rares, n- no such thing. That's weird. So, like, there were no just, like, five cent rares? Nope. That'd be weird for the economy. I can't even imagine that. Commons were 30 cents. Wow. That's expensive for a yeah, common. I know, right? <laughs> Like, unplayable uncommons might hit 30 cents, mm-hmm. or playable uncommons might hit 30 cents, yeah. to a dollar, depends, but... Sometimes commons. people struggle to get basic land. Really? I've, I've heard about that. Yeah. Like, they would write basic lands behind, like, moxes and things like that, Yeah. just because basic lands were hard to come by. That's crazy. Did they not sell, like, packs? Was it only in the booster packs? I think uh, so. When 4th edition was around, lands only came in starter decks. Wow. And they sold a lot of booster packs because if you had your land, you didn't want to buy more land. Wow. I can't imagine a shortage on basic lands. That's, that's insane to even think about. Yeah. But, uh, I guess we can move on to the event. Uh, Jerry, what deck did you pilot? I piloted The Reanimator by Alan Comer. You want to tell us a little bit about this deck? Yeah. Um, so I guess... The idea is you reanimate things. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Believe it or not, you reanimate a reanimator. Um, you use bizarre baghat is probably one of the most integral parts of the puzzle because it lets you ditch your reanimation targets into the grave and yeah. also find like the reanimation spells. I saw plenty of like exasperated sighs at your turn one bizarre of Baghdad. Like, yeah. that is not what the opponent wants to see. Yeah, there is quite a few on the other side of the table just. Turn one bizarre, discard things, get back a Krovis in. Yeah. Like, at that point, you just dig through your deck at such a rate that it's ridiculous. I, I, I did a turn two Nickel Bolas, uh, swing in, get in for seven, make my opponent discard the hand. That was that was pretty much it's game. Disgu- that's just disgusting. Don't even hang on to the Nickel. Just throw them away for one turn. Made them discard their hand. <laughs> turn do. two. Seems fine. <laughs> so what did you play, Dylan? I played, in quotes, the modern deck uh, by Brian Weissman. I'm not actually too familiar on the history of this deck. Uh, do you know more about this deck, Tavis? Like the kind of meta that it came around in? Well, uh, Brian invented the the school of thought that was really sort of a control idea. Okay. Um, he played a lot of lands so that he wouldn't have to discard his counter spells. Mm-hmm. And the idea was just to keep countering things. And uh, one of the things that he did was... He minimized his number of win conditions so that he hmm. could maximize his other counter spells. And yeah, things. it's really interesting to see. Like, this was so early in Magic, but he was so forward thinking mm-hmm. with things in the control deck. Like, 
playing enough lands to actually find them on time and seeing four or five lands in your opening hand not being a bad thing. Right. He played a lot of lands uh, yeah. compared to other decks of the time. And I know uh, people are still confused nowadays when you see control decks with only one or two win conditions, but it's all it needs, really. Yep. And <laughs> in this wonderful deck, the win condition is a pair of fireballs, which uh, could not just be more beautiful. What better way than to just time walk and... and Recall and regrow turns and turns and cards and cards and then fireball your opponent out. That's mm-hmm. that's a beautiful win condition. So I heard something about Mirror World. Oh yeah, is that main board? Mirror World. Mirror Universe. Mirror Universe. Mirror, mirror Universe. That card you don't even know. The the main board Mirror Universe felt so good. I I be- with the fireball win condition yeah. it just all right makes it a little bit easier I imagine. Yeah. For the unaware, Mirror Universe is an artifact that costs six mana. And basically says, tap it and sacrifice it on your upkeep to change life totals with your opponent. Which, when your opponent's beating you down, they just cringe to see that your life totals are about to be switched. You might have to uh, research the history of the way that the game worked back then, but originally you could go to zero life. Oh, really? And you would not lose the game until the end of the step. Oh. Yeah. So you could mana burn yourself to zero life, switch life totals, and then pass turn. That's disgusting. <laughs> Just absolutely crazy. Wow. <laughs> Mirror Universe sounds just like an absolute beating. That, that was another win condition. Yeah. Yep. Did Man. you ever see the, how the, those old images of how this like stack and interactions oh, yeah. work? They're literally dungeons. <laughs> they, yeah. they format them to look like dungeons and how, alright, someone casts an interrupt, what happens, what's the procedure, and it might just yeah. come a long way since then. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy to think that through that, people... People got in whole games in the time of the match, like in just 50 minutes finishing this control game. I struggled to finish one game in our in our match time because I just had to grind out recursive ancestral recalls and things like that. Being really familiar with it would help. And, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For All sure. the decks tonight were surprises for everyone playing them. It was oh yeah, kind of luck of the draw there. So we had some great decks out there. I I just dodged getting to play Necropodents. I was so close to trading with Scott, and it turned out he actually did get Necropodence. I would have loved that deck. Necropodence is a good card. I, I played against someone who turned one Necropodence and just filled up their hand and always had seven cards, and oh. I was just... I think I actually won that game. Bizarre Baghdad and, and Nicol Bolas is still pretty good. Yeah. Believe it or not. Beating out Necropodence. All right, so... Tavis, is this? I'm, I'm assuming this isn't the first time. It sounds like you've done this event before. How many times this have you done the, this? This is the second time I've done this event. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first time was with nine decks, and this time was 14 decks. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, learn anything new about how to run these things? No, it went great. Yeah, I, yeah. I, would, I would completely agree. I saw a lot of people out there having fun. A lot of people just, just being absolutely disgusted by Gorilla Shaman, which is what you want to see. It's That card was such a beating. Blowing up moxes for one mana. Crazy times we live in. Crazy times. Can we talk about Jamie Daytone for a second? Oh, can we talk about Jamie <laughs> Daytone for the rest of the show? We could. I would like that. <laughs> Beautiful old Jamie Daytone. It's it's crazy to see that as a role player. Like, uh, on one of these handouts, it was like, and cards have to be powerful enough to compete with Jamie Daytone and Necropodence and Ancestral Recall. Like, those three cards are all on the same level. <laughs> Of power, but it's crazy. I saw you play it once, and it seemed it seemed like yeah, it like, did a lot of work. He played it against me. He drew card turn uh, after turn after turn. When that and library both. Oh yeah, the library Jamie Daytone combo. That was when it when it works. It's really sweet. Yeah, it's just it's it's easy to make fun of, but man, can you ride a Jamie Daytone to victory? You'd be surprised. Um. So Tavis, uh, what gave you the idea to run this kind of event in the first place? Well, I like playing Vintage, and there aren't a lot of people around that have decks to play Vintage, so mm-hmm. I decided I'd make a bunch of decks myself and just have everyone play. Yeah, what well, better way to get people to play than put a deck in front of them. Exactly. For sure. Yeah, Vintage is its an unfortunate format because it's so fun and I like it, but the barrier to entry just tends to be difficult. It's huge. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a little bit. Yeah, a little, yeah, bit. A little bit. <laughs> it is tiny bit like magic online has helped with that a little bit yeah like cards are not the same price i think it's like 10 ticks you can get power nine maybe they're like 20 ticks nowadays right yeah they've been a little bit more lenient on printing those out in yeah. the online format the digital format but it's, it's good that magic online can give a format like that a home uh 
and nowadays where it's not too easy to play vintage in person. And Magic Online gets around the reserve list oh, with the, yeah. the no reprint policy. So exactly. Do you? Oh, should we ask? Is this a taboo topic? Do you have a, an, an opinion on the reserve list? Hmm, I don't an really. Collector? No, I, I don't really have an opinion on it. Mm-hmm. It's got good things and bad things. So. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah, and I know. I've read Wizard's statement of, statements about it, and they're very, very specific that it had to be done at the time it was done. Collectors, and I, I, I feel for them, collectors would have just dropped off the game, and it could have just died there. That could have been that. But they did what they did to keep the game alive, and we're still here now. Yep. Yeah. Any, any closing thoughts for us, Jerry, since you gave us such a wonderful opening? Hey, I, that was my first time giving an opening. You did really well. You say that very sarcastically. Maybe in like three or four more podcasts, we'll let you do the opening again. All right, <laughs> I'll I'll practice. I'll, I'll do it in my spare time. I'll sit in front of the mirror and open our our show here. That's good. Um, not really. I just thank you, Tavis. This was a lot of fun. I very much enjoyed it. Um, my yeah. deck was definitely a learning curve, but I think I think I had it. At least I had it a little bit down. Like yeah. I, I like playing it a lot, and this is from someone who's never played a reanimator type deck. Mm-hmm. It was super fun to play. Like, this whole thing was just a blast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, we're still pretty new to this podcast thing, but if you have any feedback for us, we're always very open at our Tumblr, friendlymulligan.tumblr.com, which I'll plug right there. But seriously, we're open to suggestions and comments and feedback, so please get back to us. And thank you so much, Tavis, again. For You're welcome. Show. Yeah, thanks. Of course. On April 5th, 2016, Andreas created a Facebook group named MTG Old School Inspiration. A few days later, on April 12th, he made me an admin of the group. We were the first two admins of that group with the goal of promoting the old school format worldwide. And the old school player base did grow. April 24th, 2017, the group name was changed to Old School Magic for Life. It quickly grew to be the largest old school magic community on Facebook. It currently has 3,265 members. In December 2017, the Central Florida Old School Magic Group was formed. In January 2019, the Tampa Bay Togs Old School Magic Group was formed. In September 2021, the Florida Fireballs Old School Magic Group was formed. I finally have some relatively local old school players to play constructed magic with. The largest old school magic tournament to date is the 2019 NoobCon event in Gothenburg, Sweden, with 170 players. The largest that I've played in is the 2019 Magic Fest Vegas old school tournament with over 120 players. I didn't do great, but I did okay, I guess. I got 49th out of um, more than 120. Middle of the field. I'll put a link in the top right corner here for anyone that wants to see what I played. And that's it. If you play old school magic, I'd love to hear how you got back into the game. Leave a comment down below for posterity. Include when it happened, where you played, and how many people showed up.